Hi there everyone. If you're interested in micros, sub 250 grams or three inch racing, this video is gonna be for you because we are gonna be testing 15 different 1404 motors from the likes of Beta FPV, Brother Hobby, Emacs, Flyfish, Happy Model, Hollybro, iFlight, MEPS, SkyStars, SpeedyBeat, TBS and T-Motor and seeing which of these motors performs the best and which gives the best value for money for your next three inch build. It's a heap to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Before we dive into the test results, I wanted to show you all of the motors and take you through the preparations that I've made for this testing. Starting with the motor wires. All of the motors have had their wires cut to exactly three inches long, so they're on a level playing field in terms of motor weight and also the resistance of the motor wires. Now, taking that into account, some of the motors, like this Hollybro motor, have very thin wires, and other motors, like this TBS Pod Racer, have very thick wires and that will make a difference to the weight and also to the resistance but I think keeping all the wires to the same length is the fair test here. All of the motors are tested using the same prop and it's this HQT 3x3x3 and the reason that I've chosen this prop is that it's one of the best performing props that I've tested for 3 inch drones and it performs really well across the board. So it's what I would recommend for typical freestyle three inch flying. And I think it's a great prop to put all of these motors through their paces and see how they perform compared to each other. All right, so now it's time to take a look at the test results. And we're gonna start by looking at the KV of the motor. I measure KV by running the motor full throttle with no prop at seven volts, and then measuring the RPM that the motor achieves using an optical tape and dividing that RPM by seven to give the KV in RPM per volt. Looking now at the results, we can see the rated KV in dark blue and the measured KV in light blue. And ideally, we'd like the measured KV to be similar to the rated KV. When there's a large discrepancy between rated and measured KV, it can lead to some pretty weird things. Like you might buy a Hollybro Ripper 3800 KV motor and think, oh, that's great. That's the right throttle response that I like. And not realize that that motor is actually more like 3500 KV in reality. And then you go and buy another 3800 kV motor because that's the kV that you like. You buy it from Beta FPV and that motor's got a kV of 3770. And that's a 10% difference between two motors that should have the same kV. And that's gonna give you a different throttle response, give you a different feel. It's not gonna help you to pick the right motor. So this chart shows you the measured kV in light blue and you can see the motors that actually have a similar kV to each other, even though they might have something different written on them. If you enjoy independent scientific test data like this, please consider supporting the channel, either directly through my Patreon or indirectly using affiliate links. If you're about to make an Amazon purchase, why not click through on my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description. It won't cost you anything, Amazon will make a little bit less profit off you, and Jeff Bezos will send a few dollars my way to help support more great videos like this. And let's face it, he can probably spare those few dollars, and I would sure appreciate it. Now it's time to look at the thrust and efficiency of these motors. I measure this using an HQT 3x3x3 test prop, and we're doing a throttle ramp from zero to 100% throttle at 16 volts. I'm measuring the RPM of the motor, the thrust, the torque that it's producing, and also all of the electrical parameters like voltage, current, and power. From all this data, we can look at not only the thrust of the motor, but also its efficiency over the whole throttle range. Let's start by looking at the thrust versus throttle curves. We've got throttle on the x-axis and thrust on the y-axis. I want to call your attention to a feature that I think is a real risk with these smaller 1404 size motors, and that is insufficient torque for the kV of the motor. You can see that some of these curves, particularly the ones higher up, have this phenomenon where they sort of flatten out at high throttle. This is caused by the motor running out of torque. It would like to drive to a higher RPM, but it doesn't have the torque to spin the prop that fast. And so the thrust versus throttle curve sort of flattens out and you don't get much increase in thrust for more throttle. This is a real problem for a couple of reasons. The first is motor heating. You can see that we're putting more power in because the throttle setting is higher, but we're not getting commensurately more thrust. We're not getting more power out of the motor. That means the motor efficiency is falling off really badly and all of that wasted energy that's not going into the prop is going into heating up the motor and that risks the motor getting really hot and smoking. So that's problem number one. The second problem is low throttle control. I've picked three motors to show this. The Flyfish Flash 1404 4500 kV, the iFlight Zing 1504 3900 kV and the SkyStars 1404 3800 kV. 
we can see that at low throttle, the Flyfish Flash has the steepest curve. And that means it has the worst low throttle control. A small movement of the throttle stick leads to a big change in thrust, and that's hard to control at low throttle. Looking at the higher throttle part of the curve, you can see that the Flyfish Flash starts to sort of flatten out at high throttle and doesn't end up delivering any more thrust, really, than the Skystar's 1404-3800 kV. So that Skystar's motor has much better low throttle control because it's got a much shallower curve at low throttle and it produces about the same top end power. So you can see that with the 4500 kV motor, we've sacrificed low throttle control and we've not gained anything. Compare that to a slightly larger motor, the Zing 1504-3900 kV, that again has better low throttle control than the Flyfish Flash, but because it's a bigger motor and can deliver more torque, it doesn't flatten out at high throttle and so it delivers much more top end. So you need to find the right balance when you're picking a motor. You need to find one that has enough KV to give you good top end performance, but you don't want to sacrifice low throttle control for no benefit. So that motor also needs to be able to deliver enough torque to match that KV. All right, so with all of that context, let me run you through this maximum thrust chart. Starting at the top, iFlight Zing 1504-3900 kV, lovely shaped thrust throttle curve, uh, loads of performance, over 400 grams on this test. It's a bit of a bigger stator size and a bit of a heavier motor though, so maybe not ideal if you're worried about weight. T-Motor F1404, 4600 kV. This motor does flatten off a bit at the top. Um, you are gonna want to use a bit of throttle expo to try and get a bit of low throttle control back but my goodness, it produces a lot of performance for its size and weight. Um, it gets pretty hot doing it as well. So that's something to be aware of. This motor does get pretty toasty if you're high in the throttle a lot of the time. Then we've got the Speedy B, the Flyfish Flash, and the Beta FPV. All of these have a really significant flattening of the thrust throttle curve at the top end. Um, not such good low throttle control. I would probably move past them and look at the Skystar's 1404-3800 kV. Lovely shaped thrust throttle curve. Um, plenty of performance, over 350 grams in this test. So that's a real sweet spot motor for my money. Then we have the TBS Pod Racer, a bit of a bigger stator size, 1505. I would have hoped for a bit more performance for that extra size. The Beta FPV 1404-3800, that again flattens off at the top, even though it's only 3800 kV. Um, you're going to lose a bit of efficiency. It gets pretty hot. I'd probably move past that one. And then we've got a whole stack, you know, from Hollybro, Emacs, Brother Hobby, iFlight, Happy Model and MEPS. Happy Model and MEPS, those two motors right at the bottom are quite efficient motors. We'll come on to that in a second, but not so good on performance. And that other group of motors uh, from the iFlight up to the Hollybro, um, you're going to be buying those based on value. They're not super high performance motors, but if they're cheap and available where you are, um, they might be a good choice for you. Now let's move on and look at efficiency. For efficiency, we're gonna start by looking at the efficiency versus the mechanical power. The mechanical power on the x-axis and the efficiency on the y-axis with efficiency calculated as mechanical power out divided by electrical power in. We can see that at around 50 watts of mechanical power out, we've got efficiencies ranging from 65 up to 73%. And that's a big range. That's going to be noticeable even on a shorter sort of three minute flight as giving you a few more seconds in the air. And you can see that these curves do cross over each other a little bit. But if we pick a, a point, let's say 50 watts, which is sort of in the middle of these motors power band where they're all pretty efficient, you can see that the curves do sort of stack up. So let's take a look at a bar chart and run through that to see how these motors compare against each other. At the top, we've got the Happy Model 1404 and the TBS Pod Racer 1505. This isn't surprising to me because these have among the lowest KVs of all the motors that I've tested. A low KV motor is always going to be more efficient than a high KV motor, all else equal. Then we have the Skystar's 1404 3800 KV. This motor did really well in the thrust test and is pretty efficient. So Skystar's have managed to strike the perfect balance here and this motor is doing really, really well. Then we have the Zing 1504, really powerful motor and also quite efficient. We have the MEPS 1404, 2900 kV. With the kV that low, it should be a bit higher up the efficiency chart in my opinion. The T-Motor F1404, 4600 kV, over 70% efficient and it's bananas powerful. So T-Motor are doing a really good job here, somehow making a motor that can be both efficient and super powerful. Then we have a bit of a step down and we have you know, Flyfish Flash, Emacs Eco, Hollybro Ripper, Speedy B. These are all motors that are less efficient. If you're 
concerned about efficiency, you're going to be wanting to pick motors higher up on this chart. Um, the motors are a bit lower down. You're either going to pick them because they're good price and available um, or because you're not so concerned about efficiency. With thrust and efficiency taken care of, it's time to talk about torque. I measure the torque that each motor is able to generate using an inertial flywheel dyno test. I take a flywheel of a known inertia, 50 kilogram millimeter squared, and accelerate it from 5,000 to 20,000 RPM using each of the motors at 50% throttle driven off of 16 volts. This gives us a measure of two things. One, the maximum torque that the motor is able to generate, which is a measure of its magnetic performance, and also the torque versus RPM curve to see how the torque of the motor decreases with increasing RPM. The torque RPM curves are my favorite chart. If I could only have one chart to judge motors on, it would be this one. I've got motor RPM on the x-axis, torque on the y-axis in newton meters, and we're looking for two things. The peak of the torque RPM curve, so um, where the motor is generating the maximum amount of torque, and also the slope of that curve as it falls away, because that's another measure of kV. And what we can see is that the Zing 1504 is doing really well. It's a bit of a bigger motor, a bit of a heavier motor, bigger data size, but it's producing nearly 0.04 newton meters of torque. It's doing really, really well. And it falls off nicely with increasing RPM, as we would expect with 3,900 kV. Then we have the Skystars 1404. This is a little gem of a motor. Great thrust, great efficiency, and it's got a beautiful torque RPM curve. You couldn't ask for more um, from this motor. 0.035 newton meters on a 1404. The Emax Eco is also doing well. Um, nearly as much torque as the Skystars motor, but it falls off more quickly with RPM. This Emax Eco would do a lot better if it actually had 3,700 kV. That's what's written on it, but it has more like 3,400 kV. That means the uh, the torque falls off with RPM a lot faster than you'd expect, given what's printed on it. If it had higher kV, it would do a lot better in this test. Then we have the Happy model. Um, that's got you know decent peak torque, but falls off very quickly again because that kV is quite low. And then we have some motors with uh, poor magnetic design. They produce less torque overall. And we have these very high kV motors. A high KV motor will struggle to generate torque at low RPMs because it just can't draw enough current to produce the torque, the maximum torque that it's able to at those low RPMs because of uh, the resistance of the wires, the resistance of the windings. But at those higher RPMs, because it's got a higher KV, the torque doesn't fall off so quickly. So those higher KV motors producing more torque once you get up to 15,000 RPM or more, but don't have good peak torque at low RPMs. So that's the trade-off that you make there. And then the motors at the very bottom uh, of these torque RPM curves typically have either very low KV or not very good magnetic design or both. The final piece of data I wanna share with you is the responsiveness of these motors. I measure responsiveness by stepping the motor from 10 to 50% throttle and back to 10% multiple times and then averaging those results together to give a measure of the acceleration and deceleration that the motor is able to create with my HQT 3x3x3 test prop. Looking at this responsiveness chart, we can see a pattern that I've observed in previous motor testing, which is that motors that can produce a lot of torque and have a high KV do really well in responsiveness tests. If you are focused primarily on responsiveness, you want your quad to be as stable in the air as possible, you need a motor that's super responsive because you need the motor to be able to change its thrust level very, very quickly in response to commands from the flight controller to stabilize the quad against any perturbations. The T-Motor F1404, 4600 kV, we know it's a powerful motor, we know it's got a super high kV, no surprise that it's doing really well in this responsiveness test closely followed by the Zing 1504, which is a bigger motor, produces a lot of torque, and so is able to accelerate and decelerate that prop really fast. Then we have a whole raft of motors from Beta FPV, SpeedyB, SkyStars, and TBS. And these motors all perform very similarly, so you're gonna be making the decision based on their other performance parameters. And then we have a heap of motors that are less responsive, and that's because either they don't produce much torque or they've got a lower KV, um, or a combination of the two. So having looked through all of the test data together, it's time for me to give you my thoughts and conclusions on each of these motors, as well as the summary scores. And I calculate the summary scores by looking at the performance parameters that we've looked at already. So max thrust, efficiency, torque, responsiveness, and dividing each of those parameters by the average performance of all the motors on test to give a score. An average motor gets a score of 100%, a motor 10% better than average, a score of 110, and a motor 10% worse than average, a score of 90%. 
In addition to the individual scores, you'll see total score, which is just the average of all the scores, and weight normalized score, which is the total score normalized by the weight of the motor. So a motor that's 10% heavier is going to have a 10% lower weight normalized score. Now it's time to look through the scores with a one sentence summary of each of the motors. Zing 2 14004 3800kV. Um, not a super high performing motor. Um, if the price and availability is good, it's a pretty durable motor, so you'll buy based on price. TBS Pod Racer 1505. Average performing motor, but it is quite heavy, so that knocks it down the rankings. MEPS 1404 2900kV is just too low a kV for a 4S 3 inch motor. Um, I might try and find a MEPS 1404 with a higher kV and add it to this chart later on. Beta FPV 1404 3800kV. I smoked one of these during my testing. The insulation on the wires is not very high temperature rated, so I'd probably steer clear of this one. Emax Eco 1404 performs decently well, um, probably very reasonably priced, so it could be a good choice. Speedy B 1404 4500kV. Um, Low throttle response isn't that great, tails off a bit at the high end. Um, I try and find a lower KV version of this motor, uh, 4500 KV, a bit too high for 4S, I think. Zing 1504, this is the first motor that I would actually recommend. It's a bit of a heavier motor, a bit of a bigger motor. It performs really well. Loads of torque, loads of thrust, loads of power. If you're not too worried about weight, this is the one you're going to pick. Brother Hobby 1404, 3800 KV. Um... It's a light motor, which helps it in terms of weight normalized score, but there are better, lighter motors, I think. So I would probably move past this one. Hollybro Ripper, solid average performing motor, um, a perfectly fine choice, buy on price. Flyfish Flash 1404, again, 4,500 kV, a bit too high in terms of kV. So I'll try and find a lower kV version and, and test it and add it on. Um, Beta FPV 1404. I smoked two of these 4500 kV motors during this testing. Um, I would steer clear of this one um, until they up the temperature rating on the enamel. Sky Stars 1404 3800 kV. Um, this is my favorite motor from all the ones that I've tested. Um, really lovely throttle curve, great efficiency, great power, great responsiveness, great torque. Can't fault it. Happy Model X1404. This is the efficiency choice for long range if you want a very light motor. This motor is very lightweight and very efficient. It's excellent for long range. The performance overall though is not great in terms of maximum thrust. So it's gonna be a cruising motor, not a freestyle motor. And then we have the T-Motor F1404 4600 kV. Bananas power, great responsiveness, pretty lightweight. It comes top of the charts, solid recommendation you will need to add a little bit of throttle expo to tame the bottom of that throttle curve and help give you a bit more low throttle control. But if you do that, it's gonna be a great motor for you. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video and found the information useful, please consider supporting the channel, either directly through Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee, or indirectly using any of the affiliate links you can find it down in the video description, including Amazon. If you're planning a big Amazon shop, click through on my affiliate link. It won't cost you anything, Amazon will make a little bit less profit and you'll be supporting more content like this to help everyone have a better FPV experience. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And until next time, happy flying.